I thrifted all these for about $10 and in this video I want to make this vintage men's shirt into my daughter's shirt. This is a nice cotton lawn shirt but there are a couple holes I needed to avoid. I will be making kids small size but you can also remake a men's shirt into a women's shirt in a similar way. So I marked the shoulder where I want to attach the sleeves and here where I want to move these pockets to. The bodice width, then the sleeve length. I'm just going to detach these sleeves and make it a gathered sleeves. I had to unpick the collar instead of cutting it off because I wanted to reattach it after changing its shape. The fabric felt very fragile so I was very careful not to pull too tight or accidentally catching the fabric with my unpicker. I also took out the top stitching from the collar. A lot of men's shirts have these collar stays made of either plastic or metal. I wanted to make rounded tips so I took them out too. I also carefully unpicked the pockets so I can move their placements. Then I cut off the sleeves close to the stitching. I'm going to change the armholes and the sleeve shapes so there is no need to carefully unpick this area. This is where I mark the sleeve lengths. I want to make the sleeve top to be much rounder so I'm going to move the top of the sleeve down a little. I'm going to move the hem marking down the same amount plus some ease for the roundness of gathered sleeves. Add one and half inch hem allowance. And this is going to be the cutting line. Then draw a shape like this for gathered puffy sleeves. Drafting and sewing gathered sleeves may be a little bit more forgiving than regular sleeves because you can just gather excess fabric into armhole rather than trying to make sleeves and armholes fit perfectly. I tried to pattern match the right and left sleeves, but it was almost impossible. So I tried to pattern match at least the horizontal borders. In doing so, I made one sleeve slightly smaller than the other, but I figured slightly smaller gathered sleeve is less noticeable than unmatched patterns. To determine how big the armhole should be, I measured the armhole of the shirt that fit my daughter well. When I laid the bodice part of the shirt flat, the vertical drop from the shoulder was about 5 and 3 quarters. I moved the pockets a little to leave enough space to attach sleeves. Then added half inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
Then I drew the side, but my mistake here was that I only gave half inch seam allowance to the side seams. I should have given at least 1 inch or even 2 inch seam allowance so I could adjust the fit of the shirt later. You'll see it in a few minutes, but the shirt came out to be a bit tighter than I hoped. I copied the shape of the other side by measuring the same amount from the center front, which is the center of the buttons. I gave a little shaping to the hem and made it as long as possible above the holes in the shirt. And when I was cutting out, I grabbed one side that's already cut out and carefully placed it on the other side, without shifting the two layers. The important thing here is that you don't try to fold the center of the garment nicely, as that would shift the two layers and skew the side seam lines. You are just copying the curved lines of the side seams and the armholes. Now it's time to put everything back. I rounded the tips of the collar. I guess this wasn't necessary, but I think the round collar fits better with puffy sleeves and the overall girly feel we are after. I placed the collar back in the collar stand and secured the placement with some pins. After making sure that the collar folded over nicely, I sewed through all layers with top stitching. I also top stitched down the pockets to the new placement. For the side seams, I use French seam. First you sew with your fabric's wrong size together. I used about 1 8 of an inch for seam allowance. Then flip the seam and now with fabric's right side together, sew a quarter inch away from the first stitching. The result is a nice and strong seam with encased row edges. For the shirt hem, I simply folded twice and top stitched. I want to add elastic to the sleeve hems and also some ruffle effect. I folded the quarter inch first, then one and a quarter inch to the inside on the sleeves using an iron. 
First, I sewed close to the edge of the folded hem and left about half inch opening so I can put elastic through this opening later. I did the second stitch about 3 eighths of an inch from the first stitch to form an elastic casing. I did two rows of gathering stitch to the top of the sleeves. Gathering stitch is just the biggest stitch your machine can make and you don't backstitch at the beginning and the end, so you can pull one of the threads to gather up the fabric later. I grabbed both of the bottom threads firmly together and pull them to make together at the top of the sleeve. I can do the same thing from the other side, but make sure you are grabbing other ends of the same set of the threads you just pulled. Distribute together nicely and you have a puffy sleeve. It's a good idea to try the shirt on before attaching the sleeves. Where the sleeves are attached at the shoulders really determine the silhouette of the garment. Here I realized that I'd made the bodice too narrow. So I made these side seams as narrow as possible. I probably only gave like half an inch. I used a tool tape to make these slits like this. On the side seams so that it's easier to go over her hip. Let's move on to the sleeves. I gathered up the sleeve top like this. This is right side out. I'm gonna have this bodice inside out and I'm gonna slide this here. The sleeve and the bodice are right sides together. I added the quarter inch elastics to the sleeve hems. And my thrift flip is complete. The shirt didn't come out as tight as I thought it would be. It's partially because she was wearing another t-shirt underneath for the fitting, but I think the side slits help too.